Welcome to Saturday Morning Tutorials! It smells different in here, right? I'm not crazy, am I? Frick! We are fracked! I should have erased you both from the space-time continuum entirely. I don't think you should, man. That sounds so mean. Come on. Yeah, I agree. I mean, everything's back to normal. The balance has been restored or whatever. Chris cut his hair. Cut my hair. I've been getting messages all across the expanse. Tears have been opening and closing all over the universe, so reality, as we know it, might just cease to exist. And just so we're clear, that would be bad. Yes, Adrian, that is bad. Listen, I'm not gonna erase you completely. That's, it's way too late for that. I do have a plan, though. It's gonna take all three of us. First, we will have to... Oh no, oh, that's really bad. That is really bad. What is this? Okay, I think they're gone now. I think if we just ignore them, they'll leave us alone. Let's go get some tacos. That actually is good, great. Oh, portals are super fun. This one Whee! was <laughs> yeah, <woo -hoo! laughs> This one was requested several times. We always thought that the movie version looked super duper dope and we finally decided to give it a go ourselves. In our first shot, everybody is on a green screen. Chris and myself were both shot separately so that we could each be hit with our limited number of leaf blowers and colored lights. <laughs> Time Cop is also on a green screen because we need to put a portal behind him. We wanted to have some colorful lights flashing in the background but we don't have big enough lights so uh -huh. our solution was pretty simple. Adrian, that guy right over there, just walked through the scene shining lights on all the stuff. Then in After Effects we took a bunch of still shots from this clip, masked out the lights, and layered them over our clean plate with a light in transfer mode. Worked pretty well. Nice. Yeah. We also shot a version of our clean plate with a smoke machine blasting some fog at the wall. Remember kids, any machine is a smoke machine if you operate it wrong enough. We just masked around this clip as well and added a lot of feathering and it's also composited with a light and transfer mode. Time Cop was keyed out and we did a little roto for him and then we dropped him into the scene. The portal in this shot is a clip from Footage Crate called Violet Portal 3. We have free effects, we have pro effects, and we'll teach you how to make your own effects, so keep your butt in your seat. We set this portal to an add transfer mode, which gave us some cool brightness, but it came at a terrible cost. Oh no. Now our portal doesn't look solid in the middle. We can it's, fix that. Yeah, it's not actually a big deal. To fix it, we can just duplicate the layer and change it back to a normal transfer mode and just mask out the center. Oh no, but now there's a stupid line in it. Oh no. Oh, wait. Let's just feather it out, duh. No, oh, nice. Easy. We used the fantastic light wrap script from Production Crate to add some light fall off from the portal onto our talented actor. Just select the portal as the background and the actor as the foreground and the light wrap is generated on a new layer along with some handy controls for customization. Adrian, did you say the light wrap script is free? Anybody can get this? Anybody can download this wonderful tool? That is mind blowing. No, I, I never said that. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that information with me. I'm surprised nobody else heard it. To accentuate the portal further, we used another clip from Footage Crate called Violet Portal Ground Smoke Element 1, <laughs> along with some mist wisps tinted blue. Good old hearty mist wisps. <laughs> hearty. <laughs> Dependable. <laughs> the scenery inside the portal was assembled with some images from Graphics Crate. We used some of the black terrain images from the Alien Landscape Collection, as well as a stormy, stormy sky. We also wanted a shot where the camera rotates around a 3D portal. To get this footage, Adrian just pushed me around in a wheelchair. Your legs aren't even broke, bro. <laughs> we can get into Disneyland now. <laughs> We're gonna cut in front of every line. <laughs> we dropped a marker on the ground, which in this case was a Nerf dart, because we have hundreds and hundreds of these lying around. We suffer from constant attacks 
constant foam br barrage. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this gave me a center point to rotate around and it gave Chris something to focus on. We tracked the footage using the 3D camera tracker in After Effects. When that was done analyzing, we selected a bunch of points on the ground and used them to create our ground plane and a camera. The inside of the portal is a 3D object rendered in Element 3D. Here is David to explain how that was made. Bum, Ooh. bum, bum. Dave, 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 Dave Nation. Another explanation from Dave. Creating the portal requires a few different animated noise layers, each with their own style and color. Use a screen blending mode and mix it all into one pretty looking texture. Drop an optics compensation effect into an adjustment layer, hit reverse and the outer edges will be pulled out. Generate a black circle and use a turbulent displace to have it gradually warp over time. You can finally mask out the entire portal with a feathered circle and stylize the final effect in any way. For the 3D mesh, export the distorted entrance texture and use it as a displacement map on a 3D plane. Using a symmetry modifier, you can turn this into a portal doorway. Smooth it out a little and apply some horizontal displacement. You should now have everything you need to make your own effect. Thanks, David. Production Crate Pro users can find a download link to this 3D sequence in the description below this video, or if you're a 3D whiz yourself, you can just make it yourself. Make a new solid and apply the element effect to it. Open up the interface and hit File, Import, 3D Sequence, and find that OBJ sequence. It's on your computer. In the Material setting, find the Illumination section and change the color to blue. Oh, cool. Turn up the intensity in the Fresnel as well. Well, is that how you say it? Fresnel? It is not. Fren Fresnel? You're saying it weird, but you're pronouncing it right. Fresnel? <laughs> yeah, it's Fresnel. I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> In the material setting, find the illumination section and change the color to blue. Turn up the intensity and the Fresnel as well. The Fresnel as well. <laughs> I like it. This is really the only change we made to the materials. Also, locate the environment settings and just turn the brightness all the way down. Don't think I don't know what you're doing, Chris. What's up? You made Fresnel rhyme so that I would like this take better than the other take. <laughs> no, I'm on to you. <laughs> Back in After Effects main interface, we'll create a group Nolan element to make this easier to control. You sound and like a Tina Belcher. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, you're the first person to ever say that. <laughs> We're gonna use this knoll to move our mesh to the center of our scene. We'll create a new spotlight with a purple or pink or even a blue color and a super wide cone angle, like a million degrees. It doesn't go that high. Okay, 180 degrees. Awesome. Select layer, transform, auto orient, and turn the auto orientation off. This will make it so that we can animate the light using traditional rotation controls. Hold down shift and parent this light to our group null, and this will cause the light to jump directly to that null's position. And from there, we can use the position and rotation controls to tweak the position and rotation if we so desire. We actually animated our lights using expressions. Whoa, that's too advanced. No, no, calm down. If we alt click the stopwatch on orientation and type wiggle parentheses 0 0.1 comma 360 in parentheses, this will make the light point in a random direction and also rotate randomly to give it a tiny bit of life. It's alive, it's alive, it's alive, it's alive. On the intensity value, we put a wiggle expression as well. It was wiggle 1 comma 40 to make the light flicker a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Now if we select the light and hit control D, it's gonna duplicate that light. Since we have some wiggle expressions on it, the new light is gonna have different values, so this one will now be pointed in a different direction. Do this a few more times until you have a bunch of lights. You can also go in and change the color of each one just a little bit, making them all different values of blues and pinks and purples. This is how we give our mesh lots of variation in color. Dude, it's so pretty. Yeah, it's nice. On Footage Crate, you'll find a clip called Violet Portal Texture 1. Also, if you're a pro member, there is a 4K version just for you. Drop this layer into After Effects and make it three-dimensional. Shift parent it to the group positions. No, you remember what shift parent does. It's gonna look all black though, and that's because you need to go into the material options and turn off except lights. We'll also draw a mask on it and chop off the bottom so it doesn't look like it's crossing through the floor. 
floor. That's right. There's also a clip on Footage Crate called Violet, Violet Portal Mask. That one's just a black and white clip. You can bring this into After Effects as well, make it 3D, and shift parent it to your portal texture. Put it right above the Element 3D layer and set it to a Luma mat. This is going to get rid of all those edges. For some extra depth. Death. For some extra depth. So there's another clip called Footage Crate Violet Portal Tendrils, which we can bring in and shift pan it to the portal texture and move it forward a little bit, and that'll give us some extra parallax. We'll also put this one on an add transfer mode for some extra color depth. For even more parallax, we can make a duplicate of the portal texture and bring it below our element layer. Push it back in Z space, and that's good. <laughs> we also added an exposure effect on this one to bring down the brightness. The inside of this portal is a separate comp where we track the same footage, but again, we use some black train elements from Graphics Crate, and this time they're placed in 3D space. In the main comp, we just used another copy of the black and white mask as a Luma mat to cut this out. Cut it out. Cut it out. You ever seen Full House? Oh. Never mind, man. The lighting on the ground is just fake. Haters will say it's fake. Yeah, but it is. It's <laughs> fake. Haters are right. <laughs> we used a pink solid with the CC spotlight effect on it. We made it 3D and moved it into position. We then changed it to an add transfer mode. If you duplicate your original footage and bring it above this layer, you can add a tint to it and a levels to bring out as much detail as possible. You can then use it as a luma mat to add detail and realism to your lighting. That's the Wait. real deal. Hey, but what if you don't even have an element. That's okay. There's another way. I'll teach it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Download the portal texture clip and drop it into your new composition. Move your anchor point down to where you might want the ground to be and draw a mask to cut off the bottom. Also move the layer upward so your new anchor point is roughly in the middle of your comp. If the top gets cut off, don't worry, it's fine. Yeah, it's cool. Make this layer 3D, hit P to reveal the position properties, and right click and select separate dimensions. We can now edit the X, Y, and Z properties individually. On the Z value, I'll click to add an expression. Type index asterisk 15. This is gonna take the position of your layer in the layer stack and multiply it by 15. Since we only have one layer, it's being sent back 15 pixels. 15 times 1 is 15. How do you figure? A little bit of math. Now if you select this layer and hit Control D a bunch of times, like 100 or like 10 times, somewhere in between, you'll get a bunch of copies that all go back in Z space a little bit. When you have enough, pre-compose them and click the Collapse Transformation switch. It looks like a pretty little star. You'll also need to make this layer 3D again, but now if you start rotating it around, you'll see that it's an actual 3D object that you can drop into your 3D track scene. If you open up the pre-comp, there are things we could do to make this look a little bit better. For example, we can offset each layer a tiny bit so we get some cool 3D waving animation that actually goes through the portal. We can also experiment with different transfer modes, maybe try some exposures, displacement, maybe some blurs, whatever. Just customize it until you are happy with how it looks. You know, this episode is the second time that we've used this new Premiere feature on YouTube. If you missed it, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so next week you could be notified and that way you'll be able to watch each episode live with Chris and with me and we can chat and laugh together and have a great time. Yeah, I think David's here too. Hey, hey David. What's up, man? How's everybody else doing out there? Say hi, David. And yeah. also everyone named David that we don't know. Yeah, you guys are welcome to say hello as well. And everybody can guess which is which. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, next week, I think we'll be back, but we may take some time to develop some new material. I don't know. We'll probably be back, but if not, we'll be back after that. And if we're not, call the police. <laughs> <laughs> We're missing. You know, it, it wouldn't, it just wouldn't be a production crate video if the ending wasn't awkward. <laughs> make it awesome. Yeah, make it awesome.